Better. Please welcome to the blue corner, Isaac Vasquez. All right, our next fight, we go to the bantamweight division. Isaac Vasquez, three and two record, four time inside the FCK, Fury FCK, as an amateur, one and two record in those first three fights. Trying to even his record at two and two here at Fury at least. But as I mentioned, three and two overall record. Has fought Oliver Jimenez, Michael, and he lost that fight in the fourth round for the Bantamweight title back in 2022 of last year, or January of last year. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's got good fight experience for an amateur. Uh, you know, he fights out of a great camp. Uh, you know, so does Diego Fiera. Uh, you know, he moves guys down to Edinburgh. You know, Edinburgh, we've been down there. We've done shows down there. A little bit of a ghost town as far as, like, uh, people go, but it's a great fight town. That yeah. whole valley down there is just great for fighting. And, uh, you know, Vasquez is, is uh, he's a skill, good, skilled fighter, very strong. And, again, you know, we say it just about every week we have to. The 125-135 Fury uh, roster is full of savages at the amateur and pro level. So, you know, he's another guy that, you know, once he graduates, this may be his last one. He may go one more uh, as an amateur. But when he does turn pro, he's going to be a formidable opponent for anybody in that division. Coming off a win earlier, uh, last year in August. So trying to get back to his winning ways, put together a little win streak. Maybe this is the final one. Well, let's meet his opponent. Please welcome to the red corner, Nathan Regino. Nathan Regino, training out of Metro Fight Club, fighting out of here in Houston, El Rey. One of my favorite amateurs. Dude just puts on a show. He's a fun fighter. He's really crisp, striking, and has a tank while staying aggressive. Yeah, and he's got a great walkout jacket. I don't know what you call that. It's got a half Mike Tyson, half Oscar De La Hoya. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. That is a beautiful walkout poncho. Yeah. <laughs> you got the uh, Tejano music playing in the back as well for Regino. Adrian Giannis there. In yeah, Adrian Giannis, a new fight in Miami coming up at UFC 287. How about that? You get to fight in Miami. I know you're going there for a business trip. Yeah. But maybe on the back end, you uh, add a few days. Oh, yeah. Stay out in I've, Miami. I've trained in Miami before. And, you know, with, uh, the, uh, I trained some boxing there. And, and, you know, of course, I went by American Top Team in Coconut Creek. And, no, that's back when they had a slew. Uh, I mean, everybody came out of either Jackson yeah. Wings or American Top Team. So, yeah, Miami's a great fight town. We're looking at our tail of the tape brought to you by OnlyFans. Make sure you subscribe to the Fury FC OnlyFans right now. The 31-year-old Isaac Vasquez, short on the height, short on the reach. Both fighters did make way for this bantam weight bout. And we'll get this thing going as Regino. Gets the final prayers in. Here's Wayne. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest brought to you by OnlyFans is scheduled for three rounds in the Fury Amateur Series Bantamweight Division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This mixed martial artist is five feet seven inches tall and he weighed in at 133.6 pounds. Fighting out of Edinburgh, Texas, he holds an amateur record of two wins, two losses. This is Isaac Candyman Vasquez. And introducing his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. This freestyle fighter stands 5 feet 11 inches tall, and he weighed in officially at 134.4 pounds. Fighting out of Houston, Texas, he holds an amateur record of two wins, only one defeat. This is Nathan El Rey Regino. Your referee in charge, JJ Ferraro. JJ Ferraro, final instructions here. Blue gloves for Vasquez, red for Nathan Regino. Let's get this thing going. 
Raheel as Alex steps away for uh, you know, Coach, a couple of his guys. You know, we talked about it earlier. Look who is over there, you know, that, about having access to, to fighters and who your coaches are. Look in Regino's corner over there. I mean, you've got uh, some great current UFC guys who are on a roll right now uh, in the UFC. So top-level talent there for his coaches and training partners. Can't see it on camera right now, but in the background, Cameron Smotherman also watching this fight. Is he's here the main event for Fury FC 74 title fight on the line in the bantamweight division against Peter Caballero Watching his teammate also has a good training partner for the bantamweight. Oh, yeah, that's good Please go to subscribe to UFC Fight Pass and watch this main card This card is unbelievable. Ooh. Now we're you know, in a little bit of trouble here Early back take for Vasquez. Yeah, as Vasquez on his back, and he is a strong dude, Raheel. Very powerful guy. You can see these guys are very, oh. very differently. That's very, very tight. Sliding in perfectly right now. Yeah, Regino staying calm, though. But it doesn't really matter how calm you stay. You can only breathe through that, <laughs> you can only breathe through that restricted windpipe for so long. What does Vasquez need to do, Michael, to finish this? Man, he is, he is, well, Vasquez needs to push his hips forward. He needs to get his head away from the cage, get him a little more parallel to the cage instead of perpendicular, and get his hips so he can push forward into there. There he goes. Oh, this is a little bit better. You see him pushing his hips forward. You see Vasquez's back kind of, or Regino's back kind of going way back there, his rib cage sticking out. That means those hips are thrusting into the back. Makes it very, very difficult when your spine's oh, out of alignment. Man. But Regino does a great job of escaping there. And now he's got to just get into a posi an oh. unchuggable position. Oh, he's back now. This is a, this is even tighter. This one, yeah, the hands seem to be a little bit closer to connecting. Good hand play thus far by Nathan Regino to stay alive. Yeah, there and, it is. That's oh, now tight. That's this very, is in tight. tight. Is this going to be enough yeah, for the tap? Yeah, here. He's closed the space here. Oh, looks like there's still oh. a little bit of opening on the right side of the neck of Regino. Man, Regino doing a great job there, staying calm. Again, now he's in the position that he's unchokable. This is he is not chokable from this position. Now he can use his hands to kind of unlace those legs. He can kind of get in the right oh, position. There you go. Man. Nice turn. Got to be careful here. This guy's kind of stuck in that figure four. Has to unlock it some point you gotta let that go 10 seconds left and now Nathan Regino trying to unload Ooh. to end the round big high kick low kick wow was wow. in a world of trouble <laughs> yeah. and still gave out a little bit of a punishment to end the round <laughs> oh, yeah what a what a resilient effort from uh, from Regino just uh, an amazing, maybe Regino was choked twice. He was strangled twice. Here we go, Vasquez kind of taking this to the ground. Once Ooh. he got down there, creating a scramble here to give up his back. And you see here, Vasquez on the back, pushing the hip forward. Nice figure four. That's well under the chin. And you saw also, Regino kind of put his head beside the ear of Vasquez and kind of tilted his head back. That might have given him a little bit of space, being a taller fighter. You know, it's a little bit easier to escape, in my opinion. Once you get a little high, you get that elbow out, that above the elevation of the shoulder. Makes that arm a little bit weaker, makes it a little easier to escape. Great job there by Nathan Regino. And then Survived, he almost finished yeah. the fight there at the end. Yeah. It's very close. Survives the round and gave out a little bit of a, a take-home gift there. Yeah, very close first round. Probably edged that one out to Vasquez because of the back take and the near submissions. And, but very close first round. All right, round two. Nathan Regino, red gloves, blue for Vasquez. Nathan Regino looking, you can tell, squatting down a little bit every time he punches because he's looking for that takedown. They're assuming Vasquez wants to take this back to the ground. Ooh, nice, nice body shot, shot there. Vasquez in tight. Nice scrambles there. And Nathan Regino. This is where they finish the first round. With Vasquez is back up against the cage. And good kick. See that level change setting it up is Vasquez. 
the jab. That jab, Raheel, you know, those jabs are what keeps people from shooting. It keeps them right out of the range. If they're too far to reach the jab, that's why you got to keep that jab active. If they're out of range of the jab, they're out of the range for the shot. It gives you a lot of extra time to respond to that. You see right there, he tried to shoot from outside the pocket. Able to close the distance there. He's got a body lock here. He's about a quarter of the way around the back. I think Regino doing a good job of staying heavy, good foot position. Very good technical skills from these amateurs today, we're here. Good pressure here from Vasquez. Yeah, again, Vasquez being the shorter fighter in better position to, you know, kind of use that head to push up on the chin. And Nathan Regino back to the center of the cage. And again, staying active yeah. with that jab. Nice overhand there from Isaac Vasquez. A nice little high kick there from Regino. Yeah, high kick blocked by, a little bit by the glove, but still landed with the toes on the head. This will still ring your bell a little bit. Guys waiting for that perfect opportunity. He's in with a nice leg, inside leg kick there. Vasco's starting to land here, starting to find a place for those, that right hand. Good setups with the jab. Such fluid kicks from Regino. Yeah, you see Regino kind of flips that left hand out with that jab. Oh. Trying to set up that right hand. Undoubtedly, Vasquez said, I've had enough. Goes in for the takedown again. Ten seconds left. Yeah, they want him to get back up. Adrian Young is pleading with him, screaming at him to get back up. Don't finish this round back on the bottom. Nice damage there from Vasquez. Man, this is, a, this is very, very close. The second round is closer than the first. I think Vasquez took the first, but very close round here. Man, that was a tough round to score. Yeah, Regino, you know, I still may have edged that out to Vasquez. I mean, causing that damage there at the end. Regino did land some nice shots, saw a nice body kick there. Nothing really causing any damage. Able to foil the takedown here. Nice big overhand right there from Vasquez. You see Vasquez, you finding a place for that jab. Find him a couple of times, a very, very stiff jab. And then here you see Regino, and then a big right hand that barely misses, followed by a left hook. Barely missed, but a nice little flurry there that they did not show there. A nice little flurry there to end the round for Isaac Vasquez. See, Nathan Regino looks very good with the body language. Oh, yeah. Not on camera right now, but Isaac Vasquez, same thing. Both fighters looking fresh, as you'd expect, going into the third round for Bantam Weights. Good cardio, one of the skill sets for the smaller fighters. For most of the Bantam Weights. Yeah. Like, I don't remember a bantamweight with bad cardio. Yeah, I can't think of one. And I've never challenged any of them to no. it, so. <laughs> cardio showdown. Yeah, that's right. Vasquez stalking here. Vasquez is looking for that big shot, you can tell. Yeah, he definitely is loading up with that right. Yeah, throws a little, his punches with a little bit more intention. But, you know, Gino is, is kind of just touching, 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 touching. And, you know, he'll, he'll load up and have a big shot every once in a while, but it's got to be more wide open. He doesn't do it unnecessarily. And Vasquez is doing a really good job of picking his shots also, but you can just tell he wants that big shot to the chin. Good jabs here from Vasquez. Keeps some of that distance. Followed up with a kick. Yeah, Vasquez looking like he's sitting back a little bit, just trying not to take any damage, trying to counter a lot. Ooh, a nice front kick there from Regino. Held up with that jab. Actually, it might have been just a, a right, because uh, he's switching his stance a lot, is Regino. This 
Super Gino's got some pretty crisp boxing. He just hasn't been able to land. Good head movement from Isaac Vasquez. Isaac Vasquez does that really good slip and rip, kind of overhand right. Trying to slip that jab and then throw right over the top with that overhand. And being a shorter fighter, it's typically an effective punch, and if it lands, it usually connects in a good spot. By the way, we have two title fights coming up. Mia Gra taking on Kara Greenwell up next. Jonathan Galvan taking on Sean Kennard in the middleweight division. Ooh, nice little question mark kick there that landed. Really difficult to get a lot of power behind those, but Regina was able to do it. Nice chain wrestling there from Isaac Vasquez. Finally shoots in for the double. Back on a single now. Got his head on the correct side. You want that head right in the center, in the chest. Here you'll either run the pipe or you'll kind of switch to a double leg up against that cage. 20 seconds left. Can either fighter make a big mark here? 10 seconds Ten left. 10 seconds left. I mean, we're going to have to see a flurry here from Regino. Who can leave a little lasting impression of round three for the judges. Maybe it comes down to this round three on the scorecard. Pretty even thus far. Yeah, very even fight. I don't even know who won round three, to be honest with you. Yeah. That was uh, that was a tough one. I don't know, man. I, I think this may be either a split decision or, you know, if it's a unanimous decision, it, it's definitely very, it's very, very close. So, but I, this feels like a split decision to me. It feels like either guy could have won either of the first two rounds, and you know, the, or actually the, the first and second were pretty clear, I think. But the third round is, you know, very, very close. Either guy could probably make a case for winning that third round. See both guys landing some nice shots here. I still think Vasquez landed the better shots in round three, but you know, again, how do you how do you consider damage? Both of them are clean faced. Uh, you know, both guys kept coming forward. No guys stumbled even as hard as they were landing. Really, really difficult. To yeah, I, I don't know what's going to happen on this one. Yeah, these amateurs kind of surprised us today. All these fights have gone to the distance, but it just shows you how well they're matched up in here. All these guys, you know, very, very evenly matched. All right, Wayne is inside, so that means the judges have this thing scored, and we will get a winner. Let's go inside to Wayne. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of combat, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision brought to you by OnlyFans. All three judges score the fight 29 to 19, declaring your winner by unanimous decision, Nathan Regino. What do you think, Michael? Man, I, I really don't have a problem with that. I don't understand what the score was. It sounded like he only had the score from two rounds from one of the judges. So I don't, I don't know. I don't. He said 29-19, but I don't know what the deal is. Looks like they may have messed up there. But I mean, I, I have no problem with that decision. It's really close. You know, and, and both fighters kind of took the safe route when the fight, when the rounds are coming to an end, whenever the fight was coming to an end, they both played it kind of safe.